Hi, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and today I will be reviewing The Pages Are Blank by Michael Feldman. Before we do this, please like and subscribe. And very importantly, it's all very important, isn't it? But check out onlinemagic.co, 900 plus videos of me teaching you magic. There's a new rubber band course, there's special guests. Uh, we've just had Noel and Rolly doing an, a session on creativity. The week before that was John Allen, we've had David Williamson, Luch. Uh, I'm not gonna go from all Andy Gladwin, loads of people, but they're all uploaded, 150 live sessions. And there's no better way than learning other than doing the stuff yourself. Uh, than listening to magicians talk and their concepts and their struggles and the challenges and all that. So, and loads of different courses on there on all the card moves you'll need, the concepts, how to practice, the Royal Road to Card Magic, all that. Right, have a look at that, onlinemagic.co. It's great. And don't just take my word for it. Okay, so this is a book of card magic. Love a book of card magic, but I do sometimes think, is there anything else that we can... <laughs> how can there be more things we can do with a deck of cards? And... Uh, and of course there is, and it's, it's endless, which is why I love it, really. This is the latest-ish book, of, from uh, or one of the latest books from Vanishing Ink. So it's beautifully made, all that, I don't have to say that. Beautifully printed, beautifully made, looks great. Photographed wonderfully by, da, da, I did have it, James Murphy. And uh, cover designed by Mihai Mihao. Kachalek, uh, who's done a lot of this stuff. So it all looks great, that's good, brilliant, good quality. Is this stuff usable? Is it easy? Is it angle proof? <laughs> That's what everybody wants to know, isn't it? Um, probably uh, usable, yes, commercial, yes, easy, no, a lot of it, but we'll talk about that in a sec. The, if you've seen the trailer, Michael has this really, well, something that I empathise with, a way of performing magic that is kind of out of sync with a lot of what we've been told for many years. And it's so nice for someone, and I, it's not the first time, I'm not saying he's the only person that's done it, but say no, I, when I perform magic, I say, it's sleight of hand, it's not real magic. You know, I'm doing this as a human being, it's years of work, and there is so much you can do, and I do all that stuff, and I, I really, really love it. And it's nice to, for someone to say, actually, for him, it doesn't work to, you know, click to create the magic moment, and ooh. For some people, it does. For, for me, it doesn't, and it's so nice to know I'm not alone. And the first part of the book, or the first uh, little essay that he writes, and I don't mean little in a derogatory way, I mean it's little as in it, it isn't really long, uh, is defending or arguing, sorry, is the better word, that point of view. And actually, I don't want to give it all away, but I, I you know, Gustav Kuhn, the, the neuroscientist that's just, um, with Alice, just published The Psychology of Magic in his previous book, Experiencing the Impossible, oh, I always get the title wrong, says that thing about, you know, people don't believe it's magic. If they did, it wouldn't be impressive because it's not impressive seeing something that you believe, right? The, the fact that you don't believe it makes it amazing because you know it can't be really happening, but you've just seen it. And that is the the kind of ethos, if that's the right word, of this whole thing. It's The magic is so strong that even though they know it's slight of hand, it can't be because what they're seeing is incredible, and especially when we get onto the signature stuff, which has been talked about in the trailer. It's, yeah, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So this is all card routines. I would say of varying difficulty, but there's a lot of tough stuff in here. This is for people like me or people like you that will, even if you can't do it, go, that's a really good challenge. I want to really learn that. So this is for definitely intermediate and above. There's no self-workers in here, but I still, but for me, the value is, I've always read this stuff, whether I could do it or not, because I think it, it, it builds our, our knowledge and, and that's a different thing, but you know, don't let that put you off. Importantly, it's readable and it's readable without cards in hand. Now reading this has humor in it and I think there are so many dry reads, you know, I love Marlowe and stuff like that, but it, it's, it's pretty dry stuff. It, it, you've got to be in a certain mindset, <coughs> excuse me, to do it. This, I, it reminded me a little bit of, of reading Chris Kenner's book. I mean, it, it's just funny. It's got these sort of quips. It kind of plays with you a little bit. It messes with you. It's got a great gag on sort of time travel. And I, I like that. And I like the, the fact that right at the end, it brings you back to the time, time travel idea. And, and it's, it, it feels like a crafted book. And 
a book that's been written by him. And I know that's obvious, but, you know, some books you think it could have been written by anybody. It could have been ghostwritten. It's just a set of instructions. But everything in here felt like it had a personality behind it, which I really, really love um, from a magic book, especially if I have to review it, because I have to read a lot of them. So that's all good. Um, the tricks themselves, I will go through them just to give you an idea very, very quickly. I say that all the time and it's never quick, is it? But, oh, and incidentally, uh, the forward by Garrett Thomas, I really liked as well. That's, that's lovely. And he talks in that about the fact that he's spoken for hours with Michael talking about the philosophy of magic. And, and he does have some really strong opinions, some of which I disagree with. And actually, um, Garrett Thomas, not Dan Garrett, talks about how they talked a long time and they disagree. And I actually disagree with some of the stuff in here, but I, I like that. I like that I'm challenged because I could be wrong, right? And, it, and I'd rather someone said something really strong and I went, oh, hang on a minute, than someone just be a bit fluffy and, and you know, kind of a bit non-committal, which again is his big thing. Commit to what you're doing. Don't just go to people and be fluffy about it and vague, you know. Connect with people straight away because if you're really sure about what you're doing, whatever method approach you're taking, they'll connect with you and they'll think, oh, this is good, rather than kind of be, yeah, anyway. So, back to the tricks. Not like me to digress. The first trick um, was the one where I thought, oh, yeah, I can do this straight away. Straight away, I'm going to take this out, and this is in the everyday carry section, which is a massive chunk of the book, actually. The stuff that he says he will do, you know, if someone says do a trick, he'll do one of these, and it'll be in his gigs. Um, but the uh, first one is full style cut on me. Now, I basically read this and went and did it. I sort of messed it up a little bit, but it still works really, really well. And he has this thing about using the, the people to, to create the deception as well as yourself. So what I mean by that is that you don't have to just lie about the trick. You can create a realistic kind of, in this case, they both look at the same card, then they disagree with what card it was, which is a lovely moment because they're taking it onto them. And that's when, in the end, you end up with a vanishing deck routine, basically showing both of the cards that they're disagreeing with, which I think, you know, is really, really nice. So I thought, right, we're in here. This isn't going to take much work. I can do this straight away. Oh, ho, ho, that wasn't correct. No, it wasn't. Victory is, uh, this is where I started fumbling, <laughs> uh, which I see as a good thing. I love that thing. You've got, I can't do that. Really want to do it. It's a triumph routine in the hands that has got such a good display. I mean, you literally show the cards mixed, face up, face down, all meshed together, and then spread them. And this isn't on the table. It's, it's in your hands. And... Up to one point, I went, yeah, I can, I can do this. I think I can do this pretty much straight away. And then it's like, and then you've got to do a, a thumb fan in your non-dominant hand. And I just went, right, well, that's going to take a while, isn't it? Um, which is doable, we all know, because we've learned with the, the other hand. And there's quite a lot in here, actually. The few things where you do, you hold the deck in like the opposite hand dealing grip. And when you do it, you go... Oh, I don't like that. It's kind of, if you escape, it's like riding switch. It's, there's a lot of stuff in here. It's, it, and that's why it feels quite contemporary, really. And I'm not saying there hasn't people done that hundreds of years ago. They probably have. But, um, but he said it's really disarming. If you can learn to do that, and it's a bit like those kind of controls that are very simple, but you've got to kind of fan the cards in weird ways. Really good stuff. Well worth learning. And I don't think it's definitely not undoable. This whole section we've got, and I'm, I hope I don't miss anything out here, um, he's got a section called Don't Skip This. Love this because it really, the, the, I released a DVD called Materials many years ago. Some people actually bought it, which was a load of really difficult moves. Well, really difficult moves, I would say not as difficult as they seem. Some of them from Ernest Dyrick and people like that, all with permission, don't get upset, that might be difficult but are well worth learning because of the economy that they give and the and the directness that they give and and this is or, or the finesse that they give and this is the same thing he's saying right here's some stuff you're going to not want to learn it because you think i don't need to do that but actually if you do briefly um double book peak which i've actually done a few times where it's just like a, a, a peak but it's with two cards so you can get two cards peaked which is great um plain sight which is a way of now, I did disagree with one here, which is a way of replacing a palm card on a deck, which is brilliant. I love it. But he does say, if you, he kind of implies, and I know he's going to watch this card, I didn't mean that, but he implies that if you do it in a normal way, it's not, you're not putting the wool over anybody's eyes. I disagree. I think with misdirection, you, you can do it another way. But I know what he means. Um, the um, uh, Out of the Wash, 
Oh, he's got, he's got the gym pick as well, which is picking a double straight off a deck on the table, which again, he says, I know it's hard, but it's going to look really good, uh, which has made me sit there for ages doing it while I'm watching telly. Uh, shuffle palm, it's like a, an action palm, very challenging action palm. You shuffle a deck of cards, and after the shuffle, you've got the, the card palmed in your hand. Again, you don't really require it, but it's a, it's a nice challenge for those of us that like such things. Out with the wash, now this is something that's great. This is, this is what he uses when you see the trailer and he shows he meshes all the cards together gives them a wash even maybe not a mesh uh, as the title suggests gives them a wash on the table puts them all together spreads them and they've changed into a uh, in complete uh, deck order and loads of stuff you can do with this and it did remind me actually of a trick i saw in ryan plunkett's book um which isn't surprising because he came up with this in a jam session with with ryan plunkett and and talking about that he says th this feels like that it's come out of a lot of discussions, like with Garrett Thomas, not Dan Garrett, and like with Ryan Plunkett. And this feels like it's come out of like brainstorming and working and sessioning and, and then gigging it for ages. This whole book feels like it. It feels like the, it's been created from hours and hours of work. And as he says at the end, it's actually been, you know, this is years of performing it and it's, a, it's an ongoing thing. And he wants that for us as well. He wants us to take this and kind of adapt it and, and you know, develop it. Anyway, so... Uh, the Jimpic multiplexing, this idea of, you know, we don't have to just palm a card to put it in a wallet. There's loads more. Multiplexing actually is a term I use from juggling. I'd be interested he is a juggler as well because it, it kind of is the same kind of thing. Um, I know I told you nothing about it, but I don't want to give the game away too much. And I think that's it for them. Then you'd have seen them maybe perform a routine. It's called Time One at her. And it's, it's an ace, cutting to the aces routine where he kind of takes it and goes, but it doesn't really work because by the end, people aren't very interested because they kind of know what's going to happen. So you play with time travel and you show the one you've just cut to and then there's another one there and that, that's what I should have done before, but then I've already done the first one and it appears in a kind of reminiscent of a kind of uh, open travellers kind of thing, which is a really strong routine. And he's done that with a lot of things. He's kind of taken something that is quite strong and made it stronger. Uh, change blind misdirection. Change blind is a misdirection routine, which is I think you just read the whole thing then, um, which is a lovely thing using the out with the wash principle. That is a he talks about card under glass. It isn't a card under glass routine, but it's got a similar feel, and you can do it for a camera. And it kind of reminded me a little bit of the Richard Wiseman kind of change blindness thing, where it's a color changing deck routine, but they noticed that the deck has changed, not when it does. It's not a visual thing. And you uh, take the cards, mush them all up, spread them, they're all in order, turn them over, show the colour of the shirt underneath and show that the deck of cards on the table has also changed to the colour of the shirt underneath. Sorry about that, Michael. Um, <laughs> it's better than I made, uh, I made it sound. Um, but again, really, really strong and great for, again, not when I say camera, not just social media and stuff, I think it's great for performance as well. And like he says, this idea of time travel, about going back to kind of feeling like they've gone back to where they started, but there's been a kind of shift. Trick that cannot be spell-checked is uh, an answer to his idea that, you know, spelling tricks don't work. People don't connect with them. They don't make any sense. I think they can work, but again, most of the time they don't. And this is actually saying to the audience, you know, magicians spell-check trick, spelling tricks, sorry, not spell-check tricks, don't really work. You know, and he didn't think it worked because the audience don't really know a lot about magician spelling tricks. So you tell them magicians do this thing. And what happens is you talk about magicians doing spelling tricks. Then you say, right, but all right, but you know, it, it could be a standard amount of cards. You know, the card that you've chosen, the numbers aren't that different than all the cards in the pack. So do it in a different language. It still works. Make up a language and someone just gives you total gobbledygook and you then deal it out and they've got the cards and all the cards have been dealt out and you've, you end up with a four of a kind face up on each pack. Again, makes no sense when I say it, does it? But, you know, you get the idea. Probably not. Um, <laughs> not again, which is a card under glass routine, uh, using very difficult principles that you don't need to use, but that he, he uses the two-handed, you know, one-handed two-card palm, um, which, is, which I didn't mention, which really excited me. I am obsessed with the one-handed top palm. Loads of people say, no, it looks weird. People say, no, it's not. It's brilliant. You can cover it. It looks great. And then the, um, the bit that he thinks you're going to skip, there is a two-card one-handed 
top palm, which is stunning. I've played with it, I love it, and it's more doable than you think, as is the one-handed top palm. Don't believe the people who say they don't like it, they're wrong. If you can't do it, that's not that. Um, <clears throat> overcoming the signature, right. So then we've got, that. by the way, great car under glass routine where you end up with three cars under the glass, brilliant, right. Then you've got the, uh, what it's, this idea of creating a duplicate card that is also signed. Now, when I first read this, as will probably work with you, you'll look at it and go, I'm not doing that, especially if you're like me, and I won't tell you why. But the more you read, the more you see the potential in this. And I'm like, this is great, and it's actually really doable. This is where I'm not going to give you every single trick. What I'm going to say, there is a suite of tricks, including the whole last bit where there's kind of this open, not prediction, but it's, it's using the a mistake that apparently the spectator has made based on your communication and you say it's not like making them look stupid where they you say oh you you've put the card in your pocket oh, i meant put it back in the deck so they know they've got the signed card in their pocket they take it out they put their finger on a non-signed card that they've just taken out of the deck <laughs> and then they open they take their finger off and it's the signed card so basically they've got their finger they know they've put it on not the signed card they've just seen it and given it back with that hand Take your finger off and the sign card is now under their finger. That kind of thing. Anniversary waltz where you're showing the two cards separate first and then you've got a, a, a fuse card with the signature on, signatures on. And, you know, straight swaps. He's got, a, you know, um, a trans... Oh, why do I forget all the words all the time? Transposition. I was going to say transmission. Transposition like the one we've seen so many times the kissing cards all that kind of stuff but where you more magically because again you're you've got duplicate card with their signature on it and the minute you start reading this and actually going actually i think this is doable because i've got time to do this it isn't something i'm going to have to rush and again you know he's worked it in because when you do it and you're performing you realize that you can you've got all the time in the world to do this thing because people just aren't looking at what you're doing so it's i really recommend that when you read that bit, if you've got the book, don't go, oh, I'm not going to, because you really should. And there's a beautiful trick in there, which he says you won't be able to do it all the time. It kind of relies on a few things, but have it in the bank just in case. And I think it's stunning. It, he, he'll know what I mean. It's the one with the hearts. And straight away, when he uses reverse psychology, saying you're not going to do this, you're not even going to learn it, that reverse psychology works, because I think to have that in the bank for those times when it's going to work is great. And if it doesn't, you can do something else of it anyway. So, this, yeah, oh, I want to talk to, no, I'm not going to talk about that. Right. Because it's already too long, isn't it? They're, they're all too long. But you've got an idea of what's in there now. It's, I'm not going to lie to you, I kind of, but halfway through this, I thought this isn't going to appeal to, to a lot of people because it, it's re there's some really challenging stuff here. But then, straight away, so for example, there's a bit, there's a bit where you've got like 10 bottom deals in a row. Yeah, right, so, and that's why I sometimes disagree with him, because he talks about Atfus, um, anytime face-up switch by Marlowe, saying nobody does that, it's rubbish, it looks terrible, nobody should do it. He doesn't say that, of course. But actually, I think there are ways of doing it, maybe when then people aren't kind of focused on it. I think the way most people are doing it, yes, it can look too cosy, but then go, oh, and this is where you want to do 10 bottom deals. <laughs> well, most people doing that, it might look a bit ropey as well. But again, in performance, you know, it's a different thing. You don't have to be that advanced to do a lot of the stuff, and you will find ways, if you know your stuff, of swapping out some of those moves straight away with that routine, with the spell check routine. I thought, I don't have to do bottom deals there. I could actually do that. I could, I could come back with a multiplexing idea in a different way. And that's what I want from this from books now. I don't want them to just give me a thing. I've got enough stuff. I want them to kind of ignite that kind of thinking and that kind of disagreement. Um, this is really good. It's really solid card book. You're not going to do all the routines out of it, but you are going to be a better magician and more knowledgeable magician because of it. It's well written. You should be very proud of it. I certainly would be if I could put a book together like that. And uh, I think it's a real valuable addition uh, to no doubt the countless books many of you have got on your shelf as well. Oh, I always get told off for not saying a negative in it. Negative is the it really is only the fact that it's going to be too challenging for a lot of people, those moves. But don't stop there. Do 
think about what you can do instead. And actually, most of the time, he'll give you different ways of doing it. And you don't have to do the two card one palm. You can just you know, do it normally. But you are going to have to palm cards in a lot of these routines and and do sleight of hand. All right, there's no um, there's no cross cut force in here. But maybe you can do that instead. Have a think about it. Right. Thank you very much. Waffle, waffle, waffle. That was, wasn't it? <laughs> how, much, how long was it? About three hours. Go and have a look at onlinemagic.co. That's a little bit more concise. Um, you can actually learn some magic on there. And uh, have a great one. Do like and subscribe. Check out onlinemagic.co. And I've got a podcast. Oh, I should have said that at the beginning. Have a look at my podcast. Just search Steve Fulton's Magic Show. Uh, there's only one episode now, but yeah, that'd be lovely. And put a review if you like it. Cheers.